everybody. Um, so today we're going to be talking about right triangle geometric mean. So actually some of you might remember this as hills and sass. So real quick I just want to talk about a right triangle first before we get started. Make sure you remember your parts of a right triangle. So in a right triangle there are three sides just like every triangle. And the side opposite the 90 degree angle is called the, see if you remember, hypotenuse. And then the sides that create the right angle looks like the letter L. I mean, it doesn't, it's not always facing this way, but it, it makes the letter L are legs. So we have two legs and the hypotenuse. Very important that you know that about a right triangle for this particular example or for this particular topic. Now another thing I want to recall is what an altitude is. Now some of you know altitude as height, which is correct because an altitude is a height. So if I have a triangle and when I and I want to let me make that perfect and I want to draw an altitude, it has to go from a vertex and then it has to create a 90 degree angle with its opposite side. That's how I know that that's an altitude right here. Here, I'll make it a different color for you. So I'm going to make this altitude purple. Okay, But an altitude does not always have to be going down. If I want to, I could do an altitude from this point and try and make a 90 degree angle with the opposite side as well. So here's another altitude. So I can have an altitude any which way I can. The reason why is think about your own height. Let's say you're about five foot six. That is your height, five foot six inches. When you're laying down on the couch, your height doesn't change. I could take your height from your head to your toes, but it would be sideways because now you're laying down. So altitude could be taken from any vertex perpendicular to the other side in a right tri um in sorry, in any triangle. So the reason why that's important is because in this topic today, you're going to be seeing a right triangle. So I'll draw you the picture. So you will see a right triangle with an altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. So from the 90 degree angle, it's going to be drawn right to the hypotenuse. So that's the picture you're going to be seeing today. The only thing though is usually when you see this picture, usually, not always, it usually looks like this. Now it could be any which way it wants to be. I could turn it around. I could do anything with this. It could, it could look like this, but most times you will see this picture like this, where you will see the right angle here, and then you will see an altitude coming down. Now notice, since these are the two sides that made the right angle, that means this is still a leg. Whoops, my handwriting got a little sloppy there, sorry. And this is also still the leg. And this whole entire piece is still the hypotenuse. And then this piece here is the altitude. If you understand that much, this topic will be a breeze. So let's take a look at the first type of um, proportion that you would see, or the first way that you would solve a problem that involves this picture. So I'm going to talk about hills. Now the reason why we call it hills is not because you know it looks like a hill, but that represents this proportion. Hypotenuse over leg equals leg over segment. Now you're going to say, hey, we talked about all those words except segment, which is okay. I'm going to discuss that in just a second. <clears throat> so here's what hills stands for. Now what that means is that if I'm trying to solve or if one of the two legs, so let's say AC is one of the legs marked, so it's always, actually let me just step back for a quick second. If you use hills versus sass, it's always based on these three lines right here. These two are legs, so if one of the legs is marked, you're going to use hills. And this piece we just discussed is called the altitude. So if the altitude is ever marked or needed to be used, then you would use sass. So let's just come up with an example. 
I'm going to label ACX, and I'm going to label, um, let's say, I just want to make sure this works, so give me a second. Uh, you know what? It doesn't have to work. It's okay. Hmm. Maybe I'll make that 14. Okay. So just so that you could see the differences here. So I labeled each piece. These pieces right here are the segments that we're talking about. So here's one segment. Here's another segment. You're not going to use both when you're doing hills. You're only going to use one. And it's always going to be based on, and I'll show you the difference. Let's say this leg is X, and this is 3, and this is 14. Okay. It's going to be based on which leg is marked or labeled here. So now to use hills correctly, hypotenuse over leg equals leg over segment. Now, you need to know that this is always going to be the same value. That's why it's double L. And that value specifically comes from the leg of the hypotenuse, which in this case is x. So I could go in and fill in that, hey, this is x. Now, what is the hypotenuse in this picture? If you remember, turned over, this whole entire piece is the hypotenuse. What is that total length? 17. And then which segment do we use? Now, since I'm using this leg over here, you need to use the closer segment. So this smaller segment is the one you would use for this example on the left. How does it change for this example here on the right? This is the leg that's labeled. So since this is the leg that's labeled, this is the segment we would use. So if I were to do hills here, Remember, this is the want, this is the leg that you see twice. You're going to do x twice. Now it's not always that x is the one that's twice, but in the, these particular examples they are. The hypotenuse is this whole thing, which is still 17, that did not change. But now the segment I'm using is 14. So look at the difference between this proportion that I set up and this proportion I set up. That is how you set up hills, because one of the two legs is the one marked here. How would that change if I have an altitude marked? You would use something called SAS. So SAS is, let's just say this was X, and I'll still keep those same values, 3 and 14. Now notice, this is a segment, this is a segment, and SAS stands for segment 1 over altitude equals altitude over segment 2. So notice you use both segments here, and you still have that repeating value. So whichever one of these three lines is marked, that's marked is the one that you will have repeated one on bottom and one on top. So here in this case, if I'm going to follow SAS, and I usually like to write SAS like this, so I don't forget I'm doing segment one and segment two. So to fill in those blanks there, you don't actually need to write the hypotenuse at all. So the altitude is what gets written twice. So that's here, that's labeled X. And one segment is three and the other segment is 14. Essentially, it doesn't matter which one you label segment one and segment two in this case, because I could put the 14 up here and the three down here, but when I cross multiply, I'll still get the same answer. So this is how you set up a SAS problem. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure you see the difference. Now because you see the difference, I want to do some mixed examples so that you could see. And I'm only going to focus on these six mixed examples here. Hopefully you get to see both kinds of problems. So I'm going to label this picture. It says AD is 3, DB is 27, and we want to find CD, so CD is X. Now remember, it's always based off of these three lines. What part of the triangle is this segment? Hopefully you're saying to yourself, hey, that's the altitude. So since that's the altitude, we need to use SAS. Oops. So to use SAS, 
let's substitute the values we know. We know the altitude is x, so that's what gets written twice. One of the segments is 3 and the other segment is 27. So when I cross multiply now, x times x is x squared and 27 times 3 is 81. And now to solve for x to get rid of a squared, you got to do the square root. So is there a square root of 81? You could check in the calculator and you'll see that yes, the answer is 9. If there's no square root of 81, you could just leave it as square root of 81. So that's SAS. Let me give you an example of hills. Now, I already told you this one was hills, but let's see why. DB is 8. AB the whole thing, AB, is 18, and we're asked to find BC, right here. So if you notice, this is not marked anymore. This is what's marked. And this, in the big right triangle, we talked about this, if it makes the right angle, if it looks like the L, this is a leg. So since it's a leg, we need to use hills. So hypotenuse over leg, equals leg over segment. So now if I focus on this, my leg is the x, so I'm going to write the x twice. My hypotenuse, if you remember, here's the two legs, so this whole thing is the hypotenuse, the whole hypotenuse. And since I'm working with this leg, I only need this segment. Okay, so don't be tricked and use just the numbers they give you. Make sure it's the correct parts, because sometimes they'll try and trick you like that. So x times x is x squared, and 18 times 8 is 144. To get rid of a squared, I need to square root, and I get x equals, well, let's check if there's a square root of 144, and there is, and the answer is 12. So, so far... You've seen a hills and you've seen a sass. So there are four more problems. I want you to pause the video here and try them out on your own. And when you come back, we'll review the answers. Okay, so hopefully you're able to complete the problems. I actually have the answers here for you. So let's start with number two. They were asking us to find AC. Now again, in all these examples, it was either asking you to find the leg or find the altitude. It does not always work that way. It doesn't mean that if this is x, then I have to use hills. It's just the fact that this is the one labeled. Okay, so for, for, all, for all I know, this could have been x and this could have been 2. That changes up your proportion a little bit. And I'll give you one last example before you go like that. So if you take a look here, um, if you set it up correctly, you get that ac is 6. In number 4... Now, here's the thing. In number four, it was a hills problem, but they did not give you the hypotenuse. You had to tell yourself, well, what is the total length here? Three and nine give me a total of 12. So that's some additional information you have to find on your own. Then for number five, you get four. CD is four. And then for number 6, you get CD is the square root of 12. Yes, you could just leave it as the square root of 12. If it's a multiple choice question, they might try and simplify this. So they might actually write that this is equivalent to 2 red 3. Now, if you don't remember how to simplify radicals, that's okay. Because what you could just do, if, especially if this is a multiple choice question, you could just use your calculator and figure out which one's equal to the square root of 12. If it's not a multiple choice question and it's a free response question, the most you'll lose here if you do everything correct and you just don't simplify is you'll probably lose a point in general. So just one point, sacrificing one point, not knowing how to, to simplify is okay sometimes. If you would like to learn, you can always ask me and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Okay. So I just want to show you one quick example. I don't even know if the numbers are going to work here, but I want to give you one quick example if... You know, if I don't give you, let's see if this, this does do it. If I don't give you x as one of the legs or altitudes. So let's say this is x. This is 5. And 
this is 12. Okay, so here's an example in which, notice, x is now down here. But it, again, hills or sass matters, or it depends on these three lines right here. So if you notice, what part of the triangle is this? It's a leg, so hopefully you're telling yourself, hey, since it's a leg, I have to do hills. Now, I did not give you the hypotenuse. You have to mark the hypotenuse. So looking here, if I look at the full hypotenuse here, right, the full hypotenuse of this big right triangle is how much? It's the total of these two, just like we did before. It was the total of these two. So to find the total, you have to add them. So technically, this total is x plus 5. Keep that in mind, because now I could set up my proportion. So my leg is 12, so I'm going to write 12 twice. My hypotenuse is x plus 5, and since I'm using this leg, I use this segment, which is 5. So notice how, how different the, the problem could be if x is somewhere else. So now when I cross multiply, now here you have to be careful. We did this when we had similar triangles. You have to distribute the 5 to both the x and the 5, so it becomes 5x plus 25 equals 12 times 12 is 144. So when I do 144, subtract over the 25, I get 5x equals 119. And then when I divide it by 5, I get x equals 23.8. See? It's doable. You can figure it out. But again, it's a little different if x is not the leg or the altitude. If you guys have any questions, make sure you um, reach out to me, and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.